If you're feeling unprepared for your physics paper two, don't worry, I've got you. Combined science, you have three topics. Triple science, you have four topics. Each of these topics I have summarised down into just the basics, so if you know these, you should be okay for the majority of your exam. So starting off with forces, vectors and scalars. Vectors are a quantity that contain magnitude and direction, scalars only a magnitude. You should also know a couple examples of contact forces and non-contact forces. So contact forces, you have friction and air resistance. Non-contact forces, things like electrostatic, gravitational and magnetic. A free body diagram. Something that looks exactly like this and all you have to do is label the forces and the direction at which they act. Resultant forces can often be calculated from these free body diagrams. So if you've got 1000 newtons going forwards and 500 newtons going back, then overall you've got 500 newtons going forwards. Elastic and inelastic deformation. When you've got a spring, if you pull it too much to the point where it doesn't go back to its original shape, that is called inelastic deformation. If you just stretch it a little bit and then it pops back into how it originally looked, that is elastic deformation. The point at which it becomes inelastically deformed, so it doesn't go back to its original size, is called the limit of proportionality. It is very important that you understand distance time graphs and speed time graphs and how to compare the two. Just think about it when you have the exam questions. Concept of terminal velocity. Terminal velocity is basically when the downwards force and the upwards force balance out with each other. A typical example is skydiving. When the forces reach this point, you will travel at a constant speed downwards, so you stop accelerating. And finally for forces, Newton's three laws. The first law is the law of inertia. An object will remain in motion until it is acted upon by an unbalanced external force. The second law is basically all based just off of the F equals MA equation. It will really just be calculations involving this. And the third and most important law is that every force has an equal and opposite reaction force. Topic number two is waves. There are two types of waves, transverse waves and longitudinal waves. Now a transverse wave, you need to understand the amplitude, wavelength, peak, trough, and maybe the frequency. And longitudinal waves, where it gets close together, is called compression, and separation is called rarefaction. When it comes to reflection and refraction with waves, you need to understand what the angle of incidence is, as well as the angle of reflection or refraction, depending on whether it's been reflected or refracted. And you also need to be able to draw wave front diagrams when it passes from something like air into water or glass into air, something like that. Electromagnetic waves. If you haven't seen the song on YouTube, look it up. It will 100% save it for you. But you need to understand radio waves, microwaves, infrared, visible light, ultraviolet, x-rays and gamma rays. And learn a couple uses of each one. They are fairly easy to find, but go and do it. Topic number three, magnetism and electromagnetism. A bar magnet contains a magnetic field. You should know exactly what this looks like and the direction that the field travels in from north to south. You can also do this using the compass practical, which you may have done in school. Some things will be permanent magnets, such as a bar magnet. Other things will be induced magnets. So an induced magnet, when it's placed within a magnetic field, it becomes magnetized. Some examples of materials that become magnetized are iron, steel, nickel, and cobalt. You never know if they're gonna come up. You also need to understand that a coil of wire is called a solenoid. When the solenoid has current that passes through it, it produces a magnetic field just like a bar magnet. And finally, we have the right hand rule and the left hand rule. For the right hand rule, you take your right hand, put your thumbs up. Basically, your thumb indicates the current direction on a wire and your fingers will tell you the direction of the magnetic field around that wire. The left hand rule, you've probably all seen it before. We've got thumb is for movement, First finger is the magnetic field, and second finger is for the current. So practice a couple questions on that because they can be quite tricky sometimes. If you do combine science, this is all you need to know. For those of you doing triple, space physics is the last little bit. So the first most important thing in space physics is the life cycle of a star. So it splits two ways. Stars that are around the same size of the sun will become red giants, and then a white dwarf and a black dwarf and stars that are bigger than the sun become a red supergiant and then will go into a supernova and either become a black hole and a neutron star. The concepts of redshift and blue shift. Now this is what scientists use to determine whether the planets or galaxies near us are going away from us or coming towards us. If you were to shine some light onto another planet and that planet was going away from us, when that same ray of light comes back to us, the wavelengths will have stretched which means they've got bigger 
which means the distance on the returning journey was actually longer than the distance on the first journey. Now this is an example of redshift, so we would say the wavelength has shifted towards the red end of the spectrum. Likewise, if something was coming towards us, the pathway on the way back to us would be more blue shifted because it's closer. And all of this links to evidence supporting the Big Bang Theory, that everything was once a hot, small, dense mass, and over time, the universe and everything around it has expanded away from it. And using this theory, scientists have been able to predict roughly how long ago the universe began. That pretty much sums up all the basics that you need to know for your GCSE Physics Paper 2. Thank you for watching, good luck, and I hope this helped.